So if you've got the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens but you're struggling to get the tack sharp images that you wanted from it, then you're in the perfect place because in this video I'm going to give you five different tips that is going to help you get the most out of this amazing lens. Now the best part is you can use these tips with your other lenses too. So although we're giving you tips specifically for the Canon 50mm f1.8, you're going to apply these things to the different lenses that you own as well, which means you're going to get better photos regardless of which lens you're using. Now do make sure that you watch all the way until the end because all of these five tips are so important to help you get the images that you want. So with that in mind, let's dive in right now to tip number one. So tip number one is don't use f1.8 just because you can. Now I know that it's really tempting because you bought this lens for a reason, probably because it has that really nice wide aperture and therefore you want to use f1.8. But there's two reasons why you don't want to do this. The first reason is actually because your lens normally isn't sharpest when it's all the way open. So that's true of most lenses that when you actually get that aperture to the widest amount, in this case f1.8, your lens is, isn't going to be that sharp. So it's actually sharper a couple of f-stops higher. So if you can use something like f2.5, f2.8, f3.2, as a minimum you're going to find that your images are going to be that much sharper. Now the second reason is because at f1.8 your depth of field is really narrow and it's really hard to get everything that you want in focused at f1.8. So for that reason I don't recommend that you use f1.8. I do recommend that you go that couple of stops higher. As I say around f2.8 is probably fine and you'll find that your images are sharper. But that does lead me on to tip number two which is to make sure that you watch your depth of field because even at f2.8 or something along those lines you're going to find that you still have a really narrow depth of field. So for example, if you were photographing a person and they're turned slightly away from the camera like this, you'll find that you get this eye in focus, but this eye behind is going to be soft and blurred. So you either want to, you know, use that higher aperture number so you get a wider depth of field and everything in focus, or of course you can just turn the person to look at the camera so that both their eyes are on the same focal plane. But do make sure that you have enough depth of field for what you're trying to photograph. Again, at these kind of wider apertures you could you know in a portrait get focus on the tip of the nose or it could hit the eyebrow and you're going to end up with eyes that are soft and we don't want that in a portrait so do watch the aperture that you're using to make sure that you have enough depth of field to get everything that you want in focus. Now if that is all making sense to you then please give me a yes, I got it in the comments below. But equally if you have questions then do leave a comment because I will come back and help you out. But for now let's move on to tip number three which is to keep in mind the minimum focusing distance. So you don't want to get too close to your subject, this isn't a macro lens. So you want to make sure that you're around at least 45 centimeters which is about 20 inches away from your subject. So just make sure that you have a kind of good enough distance between your subject and your lens. You'll actually hear your lens, it will start to kind of clank about trying to find focus. Just try taking a step back and you're going to find that easier for your lens to uh, kind of grab that focus if you're too close. And tip number four is to make sure that you're using a fast enough shutter speed. Now one of the things that people think is missed focus is actually motion blur. So do make sure that you have a high enough shutter speed again for what you're trying to photograph. Now for a person the minimum shutter speed is 1 over 125. If you're photographing children you want to kind of double that I would say as your minimum because they tend to be kind of squirmy and move around a lot. So do make sure 
that you're using a fast enough shutter speed for what you want to capture and that way you won't get any motion blur. Now, if you are not sure about which aperture numbers to use, what shutter speed numbers to use, then you can download my free manual mode cheat sheet that's going to give you suggested numbers for your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO. You'll find a link to this below in the description. And tip number five is to ensure that you're choosing your own focus points. Now, all that simply means is that you are going to choose the focus point yourself rather than having the camera do it for you. So when you use autofocus, your camera is trying to decide which focus point to use. So regardless of whether you have nine, 11 or 53 focus points, your camera kind of goes through all these focus points and it tries to guess at which one is the best focus point to use. Now to do that, what it actually does, it has this bank of reference photos that it looks at and it tries to see which one kind of matches what it sees through the viewfinder. Now it's actually super quick considering what it's doing, but it can be too slow and it means missed focus for you, which can result in a soft image. Or it can just get the entire wrong thing and just focus on something else entirely. So to make sure that we get what we want in focus, we want to tell the camera what to do. And you're going to do that by choosing your own focus point. So do switch your camera from autofocus select to manual focus select. And you are going to tell the camera which focus point to use. So you're going to choose one that is over your subject. And that is, again, going to help you get sharper images. Now we actually covered a lot here today. So let me know in the comments below which of these tips you are going to start implementing today. And as always, if you like the video, please hit that like button below. That lets me know that you enjoyed it and to make more like it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. And that way you'll get notified every time we post a new video. That's it from me today. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next video.